guess you're gonna like this. All right, guys, so we have the learning target up on the board. Okay, right now it's on the whiteboard. It's gonna be on the smart board soon, but I'm gonna read it out loud for you so we can all understand, all right? Learning target. I will be able to evaluate and interpret, all right, the need for and effects of the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments. This is a two day lesson, all right? I think I'm only recording myself today, but it's a two day lesson, all right? What does it mean to evaluate? We do this a lot. Any word that means the same thing. To evaluate something is to take in, take in okay, assess, consider, think about, right? To interpret, though, this is what I want you to look at for a second. Interpret. What is interpret? Uh, like predict, build an understanding. Okay, build on, that's good. Predict and build an understanding. Apply knowledge. Maybe that's what I was kind of looking for. And an interpreter, like literally what an interpreter does is translate. Okay, so when you're interpreting something, you're translating it into a form that's more easy to understand. That'll be more fluid. Eli, quickly. Interpret like how you like Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, have we written this down? If not, we should be now. Yes? All right, all right, all right. We'll give you a minute. Or rather, we'll give you two minutes. What? Uh, sure, yeah, go ahead. Sign out. You know what to do. All right, so... We're going to give this one more minute to write down the learning target, and then we're going to look at the board for the do now. All right? When that clock says 2.15, we are moving on. What's up? Can you not see it? I can't hear it. Oh, I was looking at the other part, but okay. Okay, so... Let's do this clock. I'm waiting on this clock. If anyone has any difficulty seeing anything at any point, I'm happy to help. Yes? That's for you. All right, let me see some thumbs up to see that the learning target's been written down. Pretty good over here, pretty good. Good, Jordan, yes, good in the back. This side over here, we got it written down? Yes. There's no reason for, guys, I'm, I'm serious. Please don't chatter here. All right, look. We're good? Yes, okay, good. So, up on the smart board, we've got a do now. All right, this is a little bit different than the traditional do now you guys have done, but we're gonna work on it together. We're gonna get through it. The First Amendment to the Constitution, you guys should remember this is a little bit of review from last year. The First Amendment to the Constitution says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, so there can't be a state religion, or prohibiting the exercise thereof, so you can't stop any other religion from being practiced, right? Or abridging the freedom of speech, or the press, or the right to assemble, or petition. Okay, so the First Amendment is a very, very big deal. It's infinitely important. I really kind of assume you all at least have like sort of a basic understanding, right? Here's what you're gonna do. We've got a hypothetical situation on the board, all right? Here's the hypothetical. The mayor of New York City decides that because Fox News is a conservative network, that means a Republican network, okay? It is no longer allowed to be broadcast anywhere in the five boroughs. The mayor decides that, signs it into law, and it takes effect. Here is what you are asking yourselves, and you can answer this in your notebook and we will discuss it in like two minutes. It won't take too long. Does the First Amendment allow the mayor to do this? And why or why not? All right. It seems like a very obvious answer, and maybe it is, but think yes. for a second, use your mind, look at the language of the First Amendment, and then try to answer. We'll give it, We'll just give it two minutes. Yeah, two minutes. This is so obvious. But think about it. You look right, right out the door, and, and, and maybe you're right. We'll see. Tell me, write, write it down. The premise of writing down is so that you can organize your thoughts and organize. Well, you'll say. 
Why? Because I said so. <laughs> Abdullah, when you are the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, your saying so will be all that matters. Until then, other things matter. Guys, you guys, you got one more. No, you're trying to answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the question. Okay, and therefore the mayor says we're not allowed to hear it in New York anymore. And what, and as soon as the bell rings, I'm going to get some answers. What? This is for grad school. This is all, that's something I have to do. No. Guys, for real, we have a lot to get. I, at the end of the semester, yeah, but not right now. No. I graduated college 18 years ago. It was a long time. Gradual, gradual. It's a whole different thing. Guys, let's focus on the work instead of my academic career. Okay. Well, we need to know. No, we, we don't. I go. I go. For real, I really, I really want to work. Okay, so. All right, 40 seconds, then we're going to get some share outs. 40 seconds. Come on, people. 40 seconds. If you guys can't see the question. Oh, sorry. We're going to discuss it. All right, we're there. We're almost there. Five, four, three, two, one, and we're good. All right, let me get some hands. Can the mayor do this? Go. Um, so free speech is protected by the First Amendment, and so the whole news channel with like hundreds of thousands of people are taking off the broadcast for the political. So you're saying you're saying the mayor does not have the power yet? Yes. Okay, there's an answer. Go ahead. Be quiet, you're not on BT. Guys, guys, please, I really want to focus. Come on. You're saying. Shut up, you're on. Alright, so basically, by taking Fox News off their channel and taking away their freedom of speech. Okay. Which, you know, Okay, so it's bridging the speech and the press, right? Okay, go ahead. Well, just the opposite. They're, they're taking away their money, right? Oh. That's the whole point. They're saying that they can't broadcast in New York. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry about it. So, Abdul, do you, do you agree with everyone else? No. Oh, you don't? Why not? Because <laughs> I make decisions here. All right, that's the question. No, Abdul, answer the question. Right. We'll be real. Right. Come on. The reason why I'm saying no okay. is because... Oh, uh, um, Okay. I say, huh? Uh, I'm figuring it out right now. All right. We, we, I, no, sir, we have too much ground to cover. All right, 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 right. All right. So I'm saying, I'm saying no because um, I'm, I'm saying no, you can't do that because. So you're agreeing with them? That they can't do it. Okay. Actually, no, I'll disagree. So to make All an right. argument, I, I say yes. Guys, guys, look, 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 look. look. This is not like mass conversation time. This is a really serious lesson and it's part of a two day lesson. We have a lot to get through. I'm not wasting time anymore, okay? So, Eli, do you have a different answer? Um, well, okay. wait, so, so it's like you're saying only in New York you can't. Like the mayor is saying that Fox can't broadcast in New York. For, for no reason? Well, because he thinks it's biased. It doesn't matter what the reason why. He's, he's just saying they can't. Is he allowed to do that? According to the First Amendment. Well, according to the First Amendment, no. All right, that's an interesting theory. I, I'm going to move on because, guys, we have a lot to cover. So, answer, guys, everyone, seriously, okay? So, the truth is, this was a little bit of a trick question. I'm going to show you why. Although we generally think of the First Amendment as guaranteeing the freedom of speech, religion, press assembly, if we look more closely at the language, we see that first five words in the in the amendment. Congress shall make no law. Does it say anything about the city of New York? 
No. Does it I say was correct. Does it say anything about the state of New York? No. No, it doesn't. It says, and it only says that Congress can't affect these things. Okay? This okay, this is talking about federal law. Do you guys know the difference between a federal law and state law? Eli. Federal is like all the states. Yeah. State. Absolutely. But federal 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 means the United States of America. But um, shouldn't it what is it also would it also be alright if like, the governor did it to the state? Well, in the same way that the First Amendment wouldn't stop the mayor, it also wouldn't stop the governor. But well, just hold, the hold your hold. Stop the mayor, right? that, that's a more complicated question. We're not going to go into that right now. But if you remember, this is a review from last year. It's, it's worthwhile. The founders of the of this government of this country, they were terrified of another king, right? They were terrified of too strong of a central government. So the Bill of Rights, the amendments, they were only designed to curb or stop. Federal power, right? Yeah. That's it? Yeah, go. go. Alright, this, this should be review, guys. This had a very bad effect on slavery. We saw this in the Dred Scott case in 1857, if you remember, okay? When the court said that the Constitution prevented African Americans from being citizens, permitted slavery, and didn't give the federal government the authority to end it. Okay? One of the ways that you can think of all of these amendments, these are called the Reconstruction Amendments. Any guess why? Guess. Eli, go ahead. Because it, well, yeah, it, it was re reconstructing the country. It was, it was, they were passed during the Reconstruction period, in the immediate aftermath, okay? But because of this, because of this huge gap in the Constitution, okay, and the major issues faced in the nation afterwards, it became necessary to change the Constitution itself, and that's what these amendments are all about. Okay, so the name of this lesson today and tomorrow is the Reconstruction Amendments, which should seem pretty straightforward. And the learning target, it was up on the board, but it's here again, all right, if you need clarity. I will be able to evaluate and interpret the need for and effects of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, okay? So we are going to start right now with what I consider to be fun, which is a viewing exercise, all right? What we are going to do, we're gonna watch a short clip from the movie Lincoln. Lincoln is an amazing movie. I don't know if any of you have seen it. Directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Daniel Day-Lewis. It's a masterpiece, masterpiece. Starring who? Daniel Day-Lewis, who's arguably the greatest living actor. I think uh, it's a bad movie. Arguably. Arguably, arguably. Like, I can make the argument, anyway. All right, Lincoln was successful in his efforts, okay? He passed the 13th Amendment, but he was assassinated almost immediately afterwards. Okay, so last week we were talking about reconstruction plans and how one of them was his. He had a plan, and it may have gone a certain way, but he just died too soon. He didn't have a chance to really see it through. The second after he got assassinated. The what? The second after. Oh, it's the second after, but it, it was it was very short. Yeah. In your notebooks, Eli, let me take a look. Notebooks. In, oh, come on. We are writing down the following three questions. These are questions you are going to think about and respond to. As we're watching the movie, we're gonna watch it twice because it's, it's a little bit complicated, so I wanna see it twice, all right? First question, you are writing this down in your notebooks right now. There are three questions. One, what does Lincoln say about the Emancipation Proclamation? Question number one, what does Lincoln say in the clip about the Emancipation Proclamation? All right, thumbs up when you have that written down. Question one. Oh. Good, 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 good. Oh, yeah. Okay, one, one, more, one more second, I'm not rushing you. Imagine not being guilty. I know, right? What did Lincoln say about the Emancipation Just that. He said? Good. There's no, you, you don't know the answer yet. We have to watch I've it. watched the whole movie. He said some words. What? Exactly. Yes, guys, I'm starting to regret making this the period I'm recording, okay? Like, for real. I really like you guys. You're probably my favorite class. So let's, please, just blow up. Okay, what does Lincoln say? That's number one. Number two, what is Lincoln worried about? All right? So first, what is he saying about the Emancipation Proclamation? Second, what is he worried about? All right? Two, copy it down your notebook. You'll still have time to do this. Go right down. Come on. All right. Two questions up. Good. Are we good? Yes? Yes? Yeah. No. Thumbs, yes. thumbs. All right, we're, we're, no? What is Lincoln worried about? We have a lot to go through. Okay. So, 
Final question, and this is more for your own thought. I don't know, you don't need to write, I mean, write it down, but I want you mostly to think about it. Is he right to be worried? No. Okay. All right, so, let me pause it.